This is my Tesla, and not too long ago, I had absolutely no desire for one. So, how did I get here then? I'll explain in a moment, but after having mine for over two weeks, I want to give you my experience on my first electric vehicle and give you the honest truth on all the things I love about my Tesla, as well as the things I don't like or wasn't expecting. But in order to understand how we got here, we need to go back in time. It all started like most of my bad purchases do, on YouTube. One night I found myself on TeslaTube. You know, that part of YouTube you ran right now where your feed and recommendations are filled with nothing but Tesla videos. I found myself looking at Model 3s and suddenly became fascinated by the idea of charging my car instead of visiting a gas station. That quickly led to tons of other videos explaining all the cool technology in Teslas and before I knew it, I had justified purchasing a Model 3. I scheduled a test drive at my local Tesla, but once I was there, the Model S blew me away. Looks were definitely a big factor, but the additional screen along with a more traditional car interior made it more appealing. Little things like the unique door handles and portrait screen, which I actually prefer, ultimately led to me test driving a Model S. Long story boring, by the time I came back, I had made the decision that if I got a Tesla, it would have to be the Model S. I tried not to think about it for the rest of the day, but by nighttime I was on Tesla's website looking at their pre-owned inventory. Tesla makes their pre-owned car shopping experience completely different than any other brand in good but also concerning ways. Their website is easy to navigate and filter down options, but they no longer provide pictures even upon request. You just kind of have to hope that your car doesn't arrive with any damages that are deal breakers for you. To be fair, you can reject delivery, but you do lose your transportation fee, which can be as high as $2,500. Tesla does specify their criteria for what damages are and aren't acceptable right on their website, so I just kind of had to trust what they said. By the way, my next video will actually cover my entire experience buying a pre-owned Tesla, and I'll be going into detail on the condition my car was delivered to me, including a damage that was not under Tesla's specific criteria, which I'm still battling with Tesla to get fixed. Check the description below after this video ends for a link to that video. Now, I'll admit that I'm an extremely picky person. I specifically wanted a white Model S with white interior with the carbon fiber trim. I wanted the 75 kilowatt version since I don't travel far distances and the extra cost would go to waste. I also wanted the full glass roof over a sunroof and lastly it had to have the redesigned front bumper. And believe it or not, Tesla.com had exactly one that fit that description. Not only did it have all of that, it also had air suspension, the full self-driving package, and only 23,000 miles. And just like that, in a blink of an eye with Apple Pay, I purchased it. So, now that we're all caught up, let's fast forward back to the present. I'll leave all the details of the buying experience, including how long it took to arrive, communication times, the condition of the car, and how I paid for it in the video that's in the description below. So, now that I've had my Tesla Model S for over two weeks, here are my thoughts. I'll begin with all of the things I love about the car in no particular order. The first is the driving experience. You see, when I went on a test drive, Tesla actually put me in a P100D model, which if you don't know is currently their highest performing Model S. I was able to experience Ludacris Plus mode, so after having ordered the non-performance model, I was really concerned that mine would feel underwhelming. But boy was I wrong. Not only is it the best daily driver I've had with its wide body design and low center of gravity, but the acceleration even on this model is breathtaking. This is in part because this model has what Tesla calls uncorked acceleration, which was a software upgrade Tesla released that gave certain Teslas a big boost in performance, although it's no ludicrous mode. I was absolutely not disappointed in its performance considering this isn't a performance model. The next thing I love about my Tesla are all of the convenience features that come with basically owning a smartphone on four wheels. Sentry mode has given me a huge peace of mind when leaving my car parked in public places, and after purchasing this compact USB 3 flash drive for only $18, I'm now able to record and review any activity that happens close to my car. Autopilot with the full self-driving package means that driving to and from work has become a hundred times more enjoyable and safer, and the integrated Google Maps means I no longer need Apple CarPlay to get directions anywhere. I simply get in my car in the morning, and since it already knows I'm going to work, it automatically gives me the best route based off of live traffic. Air suspension wasn't a big deal to me at first, until I learned it had smart location awareness. This means I can tell my Model S to automatically raise at certain locations. 
For example, I like riding on the lowest setting, but when I arrive home, my air suspension raises without me even thinking about it so that I can pull into my driveway without having to worry about scraping the bottom of my car. And the last feature I'll mention is actually what it lacks, which is the need to mess with a key fob, door handles, or ignition. You simply walk up to the car, and the door handles automatically present themselves. You get in the car, the seat automatically adjusts itself, you put the car in drive, and it just goes. You don't worry about unlocking anything or turning anything on. It's always just ready to go. And the final thing I was impressed with on my Model S is the interior. Now, Teslas aren't particularly known for luxury interiors when you compare them to other brands in a similar price range, such as Mercedes-Benz, for example. But it's not the materials I'm impressed with, but the design and comfort of the interior. The dual screens give you access to all the information you need and make physical buttons a thing of the past. The tinted all-glass roof makes the car feel very open and looks amazing. The white leather and carbon fiber trim complements itself, and the seats, wow. They are way more comfortable than they look, especially when compared to a Model 3. Overall, considering how long ago Tesla released this design, it is absolutely impressive that it has stood the test of time. Not to say that it can't be improved upon. Which, speaking of improvements, leads us to the next topic, which is all the things I don't like about my Tesla. The first one is charging. Wait, what? Okay, this is actually a personal problem that actually has a very easy fix, but I'm having to deal with it for a while. You see, Tesla provides this very portable mobile charger that you can plug into any regular 120 volt outlet. These are the ones you see everywhere here in the US. The problem with this is that it charges very, very slowly. It only adds about 4 miles an hour to be exact. I have a 60 mile round trip commute every day and it only adds about 30 miles overnight, which means I'm having to visit a supercharger every couple of days. I'm in the process of moving, but once I do, I can get a 240 volt installed, which will give me a full charge overnight. If you're buying a Tesla, make sure you have all this figured out beforehand to make your life easier. The second thing I want to talk about is quality control. This has been a huge pain point of Teslas, with even new buyers receiving their Teslas fresh off the line with quality issues such as misaligned panels, paint issues, and a lot more. When I was taking delivery of my vehicle, I looked for these issues and panel gaps were definitely present. There was also some funny paint buildup and minor details I was able to notice. These weren't deal breakers and aren't noticeable at a quick glance, but still disappointing when you consider that any other luxury brand in this price range would never ship a car with these type of quality issues. Here's to hoping that Tesla is improving and learning how to mass produce vehicles without these issues in the future. And the last thing I want to mention is feature compatibility. This was something I was not aware of prior to my purchase. I just assumed that all Teslas had the same features due to their frequent software updates. But as it turns out, there are hardware limitations to this. For example, after taking delivery of my Model S, I was excited about not having to carry a key fob around since Teslas can use your iPhone as a key to unlock the car. But as it turns out, this feature only works on Model 3s and Model Ys. Model S requires you to have the key fob on you. I also learned there were differences between autopilot hardware, with hardware 2, 2.5, and 3 all supporting different features. Mine came with 2.5, so there are certain features that don't work. I also noticed something was off when I couldn't find Netflix, games, or the ability to view my dashcam footage in my Tesla. It turns out the main touchscreen hardware, known as the MCU, also comes with two different versions. MCU 1, which my Tesla came with, does not support many of the new features due to its older hardware. Not only does this mean my Tesla does not have Netflix, but the touchscreen itself clearly has a hard time keeping up. When interacting with anything on the screen, you can expect a significant delay in response times. This also causes the maps to load very slowly, even when you have a strong internet connection. It still supports the ability to record dash cam and sentry mode footage onto a flash drive, but it can't be viewed directly on your car, which feels like it defeats the purpose. Overall, it doesn't affect your driving experience. It's still disappointing nonetheless, but Tesla does offer the newer MCU2 upgrade for $1,500, which brings everything up to speed with 60 frames per second and enough processing power to run all of the latest features. For the moment, these little things don't bother me enough to justify spending that kind of money though. So, with all of that being said, do I regret buying this Tesla Model S? Don't label me a Tesla fanboy yet, but I absolutely don't regret it. This is by far my favorite car I've ever owned. Most of the little things I don't like about it can be easily resolved, and they are heavily outweighed by all of the positive things about it. 
Not only is it super fun to drive, but I just can't get enough of its looks. I find myself finding reasons to drive just so I can hop in the car and take it for a spin. There hasn't been any new software updates yet since I've owned it, but it's exciting to know that over time my car will only get better. I'm excited to bring more content as I continue to own my Tesla, and if you want to see my detailed experience of buying directly from Tesla.com, including the damage that was present at the time of delivery, make sure to check the link below. Thank you for watching.